Well, have a nice day, Mr. Marmot. Hi there, it's August 2022. I'm in California, going into the Sierra again. Uh, this time I'm heading out via the Pine Creek Pass trailhead. I'm gonna head up to Honeymoon Lake today and I'm gonna spend about a week out here. I'm gonna go do kind of a big loop. It's gonna be probably half and half cross country, half and half like on trail. And I'm gonna cover a lot of kind of the classics, a bunch of cross country passes. It's gonna be heck of an adventure. So yeah, well, let's get hiking. Heading up Pine Creek Pass Trail today. Today's hike is not super long, it's only six miles, but there's 3,100 feet of elevation gain, so it'll be a challenging six miles. And also, I'm not acclimated and we're going from 7,400 feet elevation up to 10,500 feet elevation. So I plan to go pretty slow up this. I'm already drenched in sweat. I doubt I'm much more than a quarter mile in. This is just a straight 
uphill trail. Looks like we're about to have a pretty good view. Oh wow. Check this out. Straight ahead here, I think, is Morgan Pass. Already getting some epic kind of exposed granite views here. Just gorgeous. And then directly ahead here is Pine Creek Pass, where I'm going. This is another shot of Morgan Pass from higher up. There's a pretty epic waterfall flowing down Pine Creek. So, if you trace it, it goes all the way down here. You can kind of see it right after this tree right here. There it is. Just an epic waterfall. Pine Creek. 
streak is epic. It's like a whirlpool down there. And here's the view directly behind that last shot. Okay, I've climbed about 2,300 feet out of 3,100, so I got another 800 feet to go. It's leveling off a little bit. have reached Pine Lake. Let's go take a look. Okay, hey, this is Pine Lake. I have to actually walk all the way around it. So the trail is going to be heading off this direction. Sun's in the shot, sorry about that. Yeah, Pine Lake. to Pine Creek. I think that's coming out of Upper Pine Lake, which I should be hitting any minute now. Pretty sure I got a mile to a mile and a half before I hit Honeymoon Lake. But yeah, I gotta go around Upper Pine Lake first. All right. Looks like I've reached Upper Pine Lake with its gorgeous views. What a beautiful spot. This is only day one of seven and I'm just blown away already. I think I've got just under a mile till I hit my destination. Alright, this is a good sign. So, I'm gonna take Honeymoon Lake direction. Okay, I think I found an acceptable campsite. Actually, it looks pretty good. 
nobody's over here. Awesome. And I gotta make sure I can get down to the lake and get water. Ah, great success. Things worked out after all. So I'm gonna collect some water first before I even set up camp. Uh, this is a pretty sweet lake. So this is Honeymoon Lake. And this is where I'm collecting water. I'm camping a little ways up above the lake. Tomorrow I'm going up this direction where the camera's pointed. Hopefully, I'm gonna try to get up near the Royce Lake tomorrow, I think. It's camping time for night one. Uh, today's hike was pretty difficult. This is a sweet campsite. I'm super stoked about this trip right now because uh, just the scenery is just badass. Tonight's dinner is going to be a pre-made backpacking meal. It's going to be the Peak Refuel Sweet Pork and Rice. This has recently become my very favoritest uh, pre-made, like, store-bought backpacking meal. It's delicious, and I'm probably gonna be throwing some. I brought my usual. I brought a whole block, like, eight-ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese. I brought a couple of avocados, and I brought a whole 12-pack of soft, like, street taco shells. So, I got a ton of food for this trip. I'm gonna go cook and go to bed, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, guess I should probably get up. Okay, it's time to get hiking. So for day two, I'm heading up to the Royce Lakes. Uh, so I'm gonna be taking this, um, you see this peak right here, I'm gonna be following it. Uh, and then I'm gonna be heading down the plateau that the Royce Lakes are on and to the L Lakes. And then eventually I wanna camp at Puppet Lake. So this is completely cross country today, no trail whatsoever. Uh, so I haven't done this route before, so I'm not sure exactly uh, how difficult it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of an adventure. Time to get hiking. Here's the rest of Honeymoon Lake behind the trees. Beautiful day. Okay, I've gone cross country. There's no trail over here, just making my own way. I'm gonna be following along the little outlet stream uh, that follows along Royce Pass. Okay, that low dip there in the center is Royce Pass. That's where I'm going. Okay, there's Royce Pass dead ahead. The route finding was fairly easy. So, uh, yeah, it looks like pretty straightforward cross-country hiking now. Here's the panorama of the area I'm hiking in. That right there is a treasure benchmark, that mountain. And that's Roy's Pass, where I'm going. It's a beautiful alpine meadow. Lots of creek flow, more than I was expecting. I think that's due to a big monsoon storm that came through this area a couple weeks ago. 
everybody out here I've talked to has been talking about it. How it's a little bit unusual to have this much creek flow this time of year. And uh, that again is the area that I hiked up from yesterday. Those three lakes, Pine, Upper Pine, and Honeymoon. Probably could have picked a better line that wasn't so steep, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, you'll notice there's Pine Creek Pass running up that way, and um, Honeymoon Lake, where I camped last night, is somewhere behind those rocks there. And you can actually see Upper Pine Lake right there. So I'm finally just about above tree line completely. This turned out to be just a beautiful day, but this is very difficult hiking. In terms of cross country passes, this is actually pretty easy though. So I'm basically walking up this slab here and I'm gonna contour and make my way up that way. And there's just the teeny tiniest bit of snow up there. I am on top of Royce Pass. And this is Royce Lake in front of us. And I'm gonna have to go kind of cross country along Royce Lake. Looks like there's excellent camping over here at Royce. Nice flat sandy spot. All right, let's keep going.
quite the moonscape out here. Alright, I have passed by the Royce Lakes. That one down there is the very last Royce Lake. And, uh, that out there is the Glacier Divide. And uh, I'm going this direction. So I'm actually going to be uh, contouring along this line here, making my way up over this little lip and down the other side back into French Canyon. Here's a more close-up shot of the Glacier Divide. That out there is, I think it's French Lake. And I believe it's Steelhead Lake, Hell Lakes. And you can barely even see it, but that's, I think, Puppet Lake. And I'm trying to get there to camp tonight. Another shot of French Lake. I don't know if I'm gonna walk by that or not today. Probably not. And even more zoomed in, this out here is Humphreys Peak. Okay, I'm making my way down back into French Canyon. I think right below Pine Creek Pass. From there, I'm going to take French Canyon to um, the L Lakes. So the idea is I'm following this outlet stream. That down there is French Canyon. All right, I've reached Pine Creek Pass. So uh, the Honeymoon Lake that I camped at last night is just over the pass there. So I've kind of made a little mini loop and I'm going around this lake. Uh, the trail is literally right through this little boulder field right here. Well, looky what we got here. An actual trail. Okay, I'm gonna continue along French Canyon Trail and eventually make my way up to, I don't know, L Lake or Puppet Lake. I'm gonna camp at one of those two lakes. slope out there is what I descended. Up there is the Royce Lakes. I think this is my turn right here. Let's see. Yeah. It says L Lake. That's the direction I'm heading.
This is the creek that's feeding French Canyon. So those mountains out there are the Royce Lakes Basin where I was just up at, and uh, this is kind of interesting. There's actually a pretty cool waterfall coming out of the Royce Lakes Basin, feeding into French Canyon. Okay, I think this is Moon Lake coming up. Another one of many gorgeous lakes. If I'm not mistaken, this dead ahead here is Puppet Pass. I'm getting very close to L Lake. Okay, I had a tough decision to make whether I want to camp at L Lake or I want to climb up to Puppet Lake. This is the way for L Lake. And there is a trail, you kind of can't see from here, but that's the direction to Puppet Lake. And there's a little pass that you get to, to go up to it from there. Started walking the way for Puppet Lake. And now that I see it up close, I kind of don't feel like climbing up that pass. I think I'm gonna just set up at L Lake early today because, uh, well, I had enough climbing with the Royce Lakes and all that. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a shorter day. Camp two set up. I got here a little earlier than expected. Um, I was originally gonna go up uh, to Puppet Lake, but once I saw the little, um, I guess cross country traverse to get up to it. I was like, nah, no thanks. I'm just gonna hang out the rest of the day, eat some food, maybe watch a movie or something. Here's where I've been pulling water from Little L Lake. Thought I'd get a close up view of the lake because why not? Well, I do have a couple of neighbors tonight, about 50 feet away. They arrived here like just after I got here. But uh, uh, they're really cool dudes, and I talked to them for a while. Um, they are like locals, so they hike a lot out here. And uh, I told them about my plans, and uh, from what I said, they were kind of like, yeah, if, uh, they, they actually went over Puppet Pass yesterday, and they are kind of like, yeah, it's a super steep headwall. Uh, you might have a better time just going to Marion Lake right down from, like, the French Canyon. Uh, so that's probably what I'm going to do. And I'll probably save uh, the, like, Humphreys Basin for when I do, like, a North Lake, South Lake loop trip. Uh, maybe next year. We'll see. It's super hard to get permits for that area. But, yeah, and then eventually I'm going to work my way up from Miriam Lake over Feather Pass into the Bear Lakes Basin, which um, I hear is one of the, the most awesome places in the Sierra. So uh, that's my trip update. But uh, yeah, uh, it's still pretty early, but I'm thinking about making early dinner. Let's see what I got here. I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, chicken teriyaki rice, pork jambalaya, Mexican style adobo rice and chicken. I think I'm gonna make that because I can turn this into tacos. I can cut up some avocado and some cheese and uh, put those in some little, little uh, street taco shells. And uh, it's one of my favorite uh, meals lately. All right, so this is the Mexican style uh, adobo rice and chicken. I've got my water boiling here. I've made this one a bunch of times. 
there's like rice, chicken, uh, there's zucchini, tomatoes, um, a lot of seasonings. Um, I think there's also pinto beans in it. Delicious. Lots of good stuff in here. Here's a chunk of chicken. So these guys I'm camping nearby said that there was just a rock fall out this direction. I don't see it at all. It was like a, a plume of dust or something. Really spooning this. A little difficult to film this, but there we go. Through the magic of video, this is plated, so it's the adobo chicken rice stuff, cheese, avocado, and some hot sauce. We think this is Valentina hot sauce, and uh, looks like I got some on my finger. So I'm gonna dig into these and uh, call it a night. See you guys tomorrow. Okay, it's day three, already packed up camp. Uh, last night's camp was awesome. Uh, this is a really beautiful lake. I think this is, what is this? Little L Lake. Um, I decided that I'm gonna make today kind of an easy day, uh, kind of just a leisurely day. Uh, so my plan today is to head back out the way I came, back down to French Canyon, head down French Canyon a short ways, and then I'm gonna climb up to Merriam Lake, and I'm gonna camp up there at Merriam today. And um, that'll set me up to be able to do feather pass first thing on day four. So that's the plan. Let's go. That over there is Moon Lake. And, uh, that canyon out there is where I'm going. Directly ahead is where Merriam Lake is. Hey, let's look back at Pine Creek Pass. And this here is the plateau that I hiked down yesterday from the Royce Lakes Basin. You see it drops precipitously, kind of a big head wall. And this up here is kind of the Royce Lakes Basin. It's kind of hidden behind that plateau. That's where I was yesterday. And there's that waterfall that I was filming yesterday. Okay, I've reached French Canyon again. I'm gonna head down, I think it's about a mile, maybe less, to the turnoff for Merriam Lake.
here's a more close-up view of that kind of head wall along the kind of the edge of the Royce Lakes Basin. This is the way I'm headed. Lush green meadows out here. Very, very green. We're getting kind of the first traces of fall. A few of the pines out here are kind of turning uh, yellow and orange. Okay, here's a close-up shot of that waterfall coming out of the Royce Lakes Basin. Pretty cool. The creek I just crossed is being fed by that waterfall out there. I guess I must be down around just over 10,000 feet because the forest has become a lot more dense. But I'm sure I'm enjoying the shade today. It's very sunny, kind of hot outside. Okay, I think I've reached my trail junction. I'm gonna be heading off to Merriam Lake, off through these trees. Quick break, I'm just right past the junction to the Merriam Lake Trail. I'm looking at it right behind the camera view and it just goes straight up. So I'm only about a mile and a half from Merriam Lake, but it is gonna be very, very steep that mile and a half. Okay, this climb is about 1,500 feet gain over about 1.5 miles. So, uh, yeah, it's about 1,000 feet per mile. This trail is like really loose and crumbly. That just makes it more difficult hiking up this. I'm only a few hundred feet into this trail, and look how high I've gotten. French Canyon's way down there.
Oh, look at this. A little bit of a climbing respite. Kind of a clearing over here. So I guess this is the creek that's flowing out of Miriam Lake. So I guess this creek is probably going to be next to us for the rest of the day until I make camp. It must have been a sight to see when this tree fell. I'm still next to this giant granite mountain. I don't know what this one is called, but I've been next to it most of the day. So I'm almost getting above tree line. And this is the direction I'm going. So we can finally see kind of the area where our destination is. Um, it's actually right over there, uh, kind of in the granite. That's where Miriam Lake is. And then following up this way, is a canyon to LaSalle Lake and eventually Feather Pass where I'm going to hike tomorrow. Okay, the route has kind of become cross country. There's a cannon or two here and there. Uh, I think I'm supposed to go up this way and up through there and Miriam Lake is just kind of over, kind of past this head wall right here. Okay, I think I'm almost to Miriam Lake. Reached Miriam Lake. It's a beautiful alpine lake. Just a gorgeous day. I'm glad that the clouds rolled in. It's cooling me off a lot. All right, I made camp at Merriam Lake. Uh, this is a beautiful campsite. There's a route that goes around the lake. Uh, I'm gonna check it out in a little while, but it was a pretty chill hike, except for that last mile and a half, but uh, it was beautiful. So yeah, I think it's uh, time for some food now. Here, there's my camp. Just a beautiful day. For a while there, it looked like you wanted to storm, but it seems to be clearing up. So if you see way out there is a little waterfall. It's kind of hard to see from here, but I'm going to be contouring along the lakeside tomorrow. And then eventually I'm going to be making my way up and then next to that waterfall. I think there's a cross country route that I can get to uh, up to Lake LaSalle Lake and Feather Pass. Here's a better view of the way I'm going up tomorrow. Right through that little pass where that waterfall is. That mountain right in the center of the frame right now is called Mount Moro. 
And I believe these peaks over here are unnamed, strangely enough. The sun just went behind the mountain. So you can finally view Miriam Lake. Tonight's menu, We've got the classic mountain house chicken and dumplings. Those of you who have been into backpacking a long time probably know exactly what this is. It's just dumplings, chicken, carrots, peas, and gravy. Delicious. Today's hike was super cool. Uh, it was pretty chill for that first few miles from L Lake down uh, French Canyon. And then uh, once I hit the trail for Miriam Lake, holy crap, that was steep. Uh, that reminded me a lot of when I do my sort of frequent summer hikes up the Mogollon Rim. I think it was exactly the same amount of elevation gain, except this is at higher altitude. That's the end of day three. See you tomorrow. Okay, it's time to get on a trail for day four. So as you can see, this is a pretty crappy view behind me. Uh, so I'm gonna be moving on. Uh, today, I'm gonna be uh, heading up around the waterfall over here, or maybe I'll be heading up a different way. I got a route find to get up to where LaSalle Lake is. And then I'm gonna head over Feather Pass, and then into the Bear Lakes Basin, and probably camp by V Lake. So uh, here I go. So I'm trying to get up there, trying to kind of make a circuitous route up through this granite. This is my first time doing this feather pass route, so I don't really know, it's, it's unmarked. So I'm gonna be trying to walk up through this granite here. Okay, so I've pretty much made it on top of this little traverse above Miriam Lake. So, climbed up all of that. Here's Miriam. And there is French Canyon where I came up from yesterday.
just extraordinary. I don't think this basin has a formal name. And this is just kind of a tarn, just some random water out here. So now I can see where the pass is. So LaSalle Lake is kind of off in there and Feather Pass is kind of right between those two peaks right there. Kind of a boggy, muddy area. All right, LaSalle Lake is right over that rock wall right there. And there's kind of a chute that's gonna go up like right there. So I'm gonna try to hike up that. All right, I've reached LaSalle Lake. It's a terrible view. Okay, so my route is supposed to take me up that. I'll do a close-up in a second. There's supposed to be a chute up here that I'm supposed to climb up. There's still a little bit of old snow along LaSalle Lake. This is a really good sign. There's footprints over here. So I think the chute is straight this way. Uh, okay, this is getting a little gnarly in here. All right, I need to get around this wall I've come up against because I can't climb up that, I don't think. It's steeper than it looks on camera. But I think I can make it through these boulders right through here. And I'm almost to the top of this chute. That was not easy. And I'm still climbing up a little bit, but I'm about to start the approach to Feather Pass real soon. You can see LaSalle Lake down there. And, um, Finally, on the approach to Feather Pass, which is right there. So I'm gonna be heading up this way. Well, wouldn't it be just my luck? It looks like probably rainstorms are coming in. So hopefully 
it's not bad weather up on Feather Pass. I'm gonna try to beat the storm system. Okay, I'm probably halfway up Feather Pass. It's difficult uh, in terms of just the elevation and just a lot of climbing, but it's not super difficult in terms of technical stuff. Uh, so that right there, that pass, uh, will take you down back into the Royce Lakes. However, um, I was looking at it uh, a couple days ago and it looked super steep and technical in nature. But anyway, this is a, a view looking down the whole basin that I climbed up from. So I'm uh, a little bit above 12,000 feet now. Just awe-spiring views. And hopefully I'm gonna make it before the storms get over here. Nearly to the top. I'm on top of Feather Pass. This is Feather Peak right here. And I'm just gonna pan down to see the whole basin that I climbed up out of. Sorry about the wind noise. So I'm about to a storm here so I need to start descending but let's walk over to the other side where I'm going to descend into okay so there's a little bit of snow down there now this right here is the Bear Lakes Basin and I'm going to go contour down that and eventually make my way to Bee Lake and the way down is Apparently it's like right down there. There's kind of a, a little bit of a trail that goes down there. It's really hard to make out, but I can kind of see it down there. Okay, I wanted to do one more pan for a little more detail. So this is what I've got to climb down. It's looking pretty gnarly, so it's probably gonna take me a little while. But uh, that again is the Bear Lakes Basin. Okay, here's the trail that I'm walking on. Um, I actually came down that and had to go down this. Uh, so that was some scrambling, I didn't film it. So, I am making my way down. So I think the route goes down through here, cuts around that snowbank, and out that way. <sighs> kind of walking through a little boulder chute. Okay, I guess I'm off of uh, Feather Pass. Um, that wasn't too difficult. I'd call it like a class two on this side. Uh, probably class one on the, the other side that I went up. So 
there's a few cairns out here. And I believe those signify the Sierra High Route, which is kind of what I'm on right now. Well, it's raining. Not too bad yet, but I was expecting rain today, and here it is. Okay, I wanted to take this shot before my camera gets too wet from the rain. And these are the spires that I was just filming. Those are the spires back towards Feather Pass. Just kind of a desolate moonscape out here. However, I am about to descend into the Bear Lakes Basin, very close to that. You can actually see a trail down there, pretty sweet. It is raining again. Got my main camera and this little kind of a rain jacket for the camera itself. It's kind of goofy. I guess I'm officially in the Bear Lakes Basin. I'm actually on some solid trail now. Who knows how far this good trail will go, but I need to get to V Lake, which is about two, maybe two and a half miles. Currently making my way around Bear Paw Lake. All right, making my way up around Bear Paw Lake. And that in the center there is Feather Pass that I descended. Pretty crummy weather today, but it's not terrible. The rain is more of like a drizzle. It's not really a downpour. I was getting hailed on earlier, but it wasn't bad. It was just light hail. Anyway, that's the way I'm going towards, uh, I don't know, <laughs> rest of Bear Lakes Basin. One last look at Feather Pass. This is Bear Paw Lake. I'm just uh, going to be crossing over it soon. Isn't this interesting? I guess I'm supposed to cross between these two lakes, like right here. Huh. 
after crossing that little creek, now I'm next to, I think this is Ursa Lake. Oh, another kind of bear name. All right, so I gotta continue along this way. It is still raining, kind of a little bit. I think it's going to be raining for the rest of the day. This is kind of the Bear Lakes Basin. It's kind of hidden from this uh, hill in the foreground. But that's all the stuff that I hiked through. Let's see if I can get down to V Lake from this direction. It's supposed to be a sandy shoot. All right, there's V Lake. That's where I'm planning to camp at. It's kind of looking like this is gonna go through. Looking kind of bleak out here, but also very beautiful. It's kind of a weird juxtaposition. But those lakes out there, and just barely visible in the distance, are uh, Claw Lake and Tooth Lake. And uh, you can see a smidge of V Lake right there. This is the direction I'm going, kind of through there. And I'm gonna descend down to the lake and camp. Okay, found a campsite for night number four. Uh, look at this view, spectacular. Uh, weather's been kind of crappy, but uh, the rain has been mostly kind of a drizzle. But yeah, it's time to set up camp. Uh, what a day. So in a wonderful twist of fate, right as I was setting up camp, the sky started clearing up. That's my camp at V Lake. There's still dark storm clouds out there, kind of the direction I came from today. Hope they don't come back over here, but yeah, they probably will. <laughs> so that's V Lake. It's a long lake. Keeps going out there. And uh, I think I'm going to be heading this direction tomorrow. Almost positive on that. This has turned out to be quite an adventure. Uh, today was only about five or six miles, but it took me about six and a half hours to hike it. And the reason for that is it's just all cross country, very, very steep uh, cross country passes, and a lot of boulder scrambling uh, makes for very slow hiking. Um, but it also makes for very spectacular views. And I'm glad I got to capture that stuff. So on the mini tonight, shoot, I don't know. There's some kind of teriyaki thing. Chicken teriyaki. Yeah, just chicken teriyaki rice. It looks pretty good actually. It's got a good uh, smell to it. Yeah, that's pretty good. You could use some hot sauce, but the flavor is like right on. It's like, uh, so getting a chicken teriyaki bowl somewhere. All right, that does it for me because uh, the weather's kind of been crappy, so I'm not going to film anymore tonight. Uh, so I'll see you guys tomorrow.
Okay, it's day five. Um, I'm already packed up and ready to hike. Uh, I kind of wanted to get on the trail as fast as I could because I'm pretty sure it's going to storm again today. Plan for today is to head around the contour of like the the would that be the northwest side of V Lake and kind of follow its uh, outlet stream. Eventually, I'm going to connect up with the east fork of Bear Creek. I understand that there's a disused or unmaintained trail eventually that you meet up with. It's going to be kind of an adventure with that part. Uh, eventually I'm going to meet, meet up with the JMT and then connect up with the uh, Italy Pass or Italy Lake Trail. And uh, I'll camp probably in some of the meadows that are kind of like a little bit below the ascent to Italy Lake. That's today's plan, so time to get hiking. One last look at Feather Peak. This here epic peak in front of me is the Seven Gables. This is one of the highlights of what I wanted to see for this trip. There's a little bit of a trail along V Lake, which is nice. Oh. <laughs> boulders, boulders, always boulders. going to be our last look at V Lake and the upper Bear Lakes Basin. What a gorgeous place. One of the prettiest areas I've ever hiked. I mean that sincerely. So right here is the outlet stream for V Lake and that's the Seven Gables all along here. And my understanding is there's a little chute that I need to go down right here to the right of the uh, outlet stream. I am entering the chute. Looks a little bit scrambly and bouldery. Always jet noise. This is a view of the Seven Gables a little closer. So this is the way I'm headed. I'm gonna contour around the right side of this lake, I believe. You could probably see a trail down there behind where that pine tree is. Okay, I'm down off of that chute. That was super steep and a little bit bouldery, uh, but mostly it was like loose and sandy. Kind of reminded me a little bit of like the Bull Pass Trail and the superstitions. We almost kind of need trekking poles. Of course me, I'm using my tripod with my camera in place of trekking poles in case anybody asks. Uh, but uh, now it's kind of flattening out a little bit. So uh, let's keep going.
seem to be a little mixed up here. I climbed up high just to get a survey of the area. So I think I'm gonna have to go that way and cross the creek or lake or whatever the heck this is because I was walking down there and there's like a waterfall through there. And I walked through these pine trees here, but it just looks like a sheer drop off. So that was kind of unexpected, but uh, I was expecting today to be kind of a little bit challenging with the uh, river crossings. So uh, I'm gonna try to cross and see if that works out. This is a long crossing and I think I'm kind of at an impasse where I have to walk through deep water or something. Okay, the water was like knee deep right there. I lost rocks to hop on. So I'm gonna go up this, see if that works out. Okay, I'm a moron. Uh, if I had just kept going through those pines, like right through there, I would have found that the trail goes through here. But instead, I went up through this area and down that little chute, and then I, I walked along the creek in the shallow part, and then I walked to this part right here, and I crossed where it was shallow. So don't do what I did. After that last shot, I did have to ford the East Fork of Bear Creek. It's not super obvious where you go, um, and it was really like slippery rocks, so I wasn't able to film it. But just know if you're gonna come out here and do this route that you're gonna have to cross East Fork Bear Creek a bunch of times. So this is the direction I'm headed, straight this way. I just wanted to kind of give an overview of this area because there's not much info about it, like anywhere. So East Fork of Bear Creek is uh, this direction. So I'm kind of been hiking along this sort of uh, granite, I don't know what you want to call it, canyon. And that's looking back the way I came from. Pretty strong, kind of epic flowing creek. East Fork, Bear Creek.
a little bit wild in here. <laughs> it did say unmaintained. Dozens of wrong directions out here I keep taking. I just crossed over this. It's kind of sketchy and slippery. I kind of crossed over to the wrong side. But I looked across the way and I saw this cairn over here. This is a very adventurous route, this East Fork of Bear Canyon. It's, it's not always obvious where to go. And the Creek crossings are a little bit sketchy at times. So that's the way I'm headed. Uh, somewhere down there is a JMT, I think. And a pretty spectacular view just opened up to my left. Basically, um, on the side of me is the Seven Gables. Look at that. after that last shot the uh, trail turns into kind of a talus field but it's actually pretty easy and very well cairned okay you may notice the creek is on my left side now I had to do a kind of a sketchy crossing again of the east fork I actually had to use exact GPS coordinates from uh, the guidebook I have, which is Sierra South, to figure out where to cross at. <laughs> it was not easy to find. Okay, it's uh, raining pretty good, so I'm uh, probably not going to be able to film very much until it stops. But uh, it looks pretty amazing right now. Come check this out. Pretty close to the GMT. Um, I didn't really film very much for a while because it was raining pretty bad. Something you missed me filming was an actual scramble where I had to hoist my 
camera and tripod up on the rocks and I almost had to take my pack off but it was actually a pretty easy scramble it wasn't bad I've done harder stuff in places like Canyonlands and such but it was raining when I had to do that scramble and so the granite was all wet and it wasn't as grippy as it normally would in fact I my foot almost slipped off a couple of times so yeah once I hit the GMT I'm gonna get a hike that for about maybe a mile mile and a half until I hit the uh, the uh, Italy Lake trail and I'm gonna take that up I think it like a couple miles not sure exactly until I find a good place to camp. All right, I'm now on the JMT slash PCT. I'm not gonna film very much of the JMT PCT because uh, I got a long ways to go. And uh, there's a lot of videos of this place on the web. So it's not really the highlight of the trip for me, more of a go between. You can probably hear the thunder. Looks like a thunderstorm's coming in. Okie dokie. I've hit my trail junction. So the weather's pretty crappy right now, but I'm gonna go up a ways. I'm probably gonna camp in a meadow somewhere um, along the Hilgard branch, which is uh, I guess like a creek. Uh, it's kind of a weird name for a creek. That was thunder. I saw the flash. It's not that far away. I might need to camp sooner than later. I don't want to be up too high in this storm. Yeah, it's raining a lot again, so I can't use my main camera. Uh, but the conditions are pretty bad out here right now. So I'm not gonna film very much of this until it clears up. In fact, I might not film much more until I camp. Welcome to my humble abode. I hiked through a thunderstorm that was at least two hours long. Lots of thunder and lightning. It was pretty sketchy at times. I'm by the Hilgard branch, so I'm near water, but it's everything's just wet out here. Hey, it finally stopped raining. There's my camp. So I'm tucked off in the forest. The uh, Italy Lake Trail is kind of right behind those kind of logs over there. And uh, let's go take a look around here. Okay, so the Hilgard branch is just over here. Couldn't think of what else to film other than my water source because there's really not much to see over here. It's, I'm just kind of tucked off in the trees. So there is a little bit of a view from the Hilgard branch, which I'll film in a sec. All right, so. This is the Hilliard branch. This is my water source for today. And uh, you can't really see this view from my campsite, but it's cer certainly not far from my campsite. Man, it just got really cold and dark out here. And it's only 6 p.m. It gets dark usually around just after 8. Uh, so I think there's gonna be more storms rolling in. I thought it was gonna clear up. I saw blue skies for a second there 
but yeah, I think it's just going to storm on and off the rest of the night. Today's hike was really cool. Uh, waking up at V Lake, was a beautiful view, of course. And then there was a trail along it, which kind of surprised me. Uh, the trail was pretty much there, like the entire way, all the way down to the GMT. Um, it was pretty hit or and miss in spots. Um, there was like that chute that got, got all bouldery for a sec, but that was really no big deal. It was kind of kind of uh, loose and sandy, but it was really not a problem. What really threw a curveball my way was all the creek crossings of the East Fork of Bear Creek. And kind of the, there was a little bit of route finding, even though there were cairns everywhere, it was kind of confusing. It was kind of a lot of turning around and trying to figure out, like, do I cross here? Do, do I keep going down further? But yeah, once I got down to the GMT, it was smooth sailing. Um, I probably only hiked a um, little over seven miles, maybe seven and a half miles today. That was a pretty short day. But yeah, as soon as I hit the Italy Lake Trail, that's when like the thunderstorm really started kicking in full gear, and I had to put on my rain gear. And it was just kind of just a downpour for the rest of the day. So, looks like it's starting to rain again, actually right now. So, um, anyway, I think this is going to be the end of day five. See you tomorrow. Morning. It's day six. Getting a late start today. I spent the whole morning uh, kind of drying out all my stuff. Plan for the day is to hike up around Italy Lake and over Italy Pass. Probably going to camp at Granite Park. Okay, I'm hiking up Italy Pass Trail. So, uh, got a late start, like I said. It's actually like 11.30 right now. So I'm gonna probably be hiking until fairly late today. Good news is it doesn't get dark till about 8 p.m. So uh, I got all day. few down trees through here. Let's see if I can make it under. Whew. Way cool. I wasn't expecting this. Ooh, it's kind of rough through here. So this is all the Hillgird branch, which is the same creek that I was camping by last night.
I've been walking out on these granite slabs and uh, you want to avoid this uh, dark stuff. This is water flowing down, but there's kind of like a slick kind of a uh, sludginess to it. It's kind of the same thing as desert varnish almost. And this, looking back the way I came from, this is the view along the Hilgard branch. There's Hilgard Branch, a basin that I climbed up from. Gorgeous day out here. I hope it doesn't rain again, but the weather's gonna do what it's gonna do. So, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna cross this Hilgard Branch soon or if I'm gonna go up to the left. So, it's going up this way. I see Cairns way, way up here. So I'm going up the granite still. They got you walking up really steep slopes of granite on this route. All right, I've reached a spot where it kind of flattens out, I hope. That's looking back the way it came from. Gorgeous mountain view day. That's some kind of pass out there, but that's not what I'm taking. I'm actually heading uh, this way. I'm uh, getting kind of close to Italy Lake. It's just through those, uh, kind of that pass right there. Hey buddy. Hmm. Well, have a nice day, Mr. Marmot. So, uh, Illy Lake is just over this little hump here. Okay, I've reached Italy Lake. I got a contour along this lake, and then I think uh, next lake will be Jumbo Lake, and then we'll be ascending over Italy Pass. I'm just barely contouring the shoreline here. This is looking back the way I came from. Really nice view of Italy Lake out here. And some epic mountains. I couldn't figure out the name of them on the map. You can tell me in the comments if you know what the names of these mountains are. But anyway, um, so I'm not too far from the opening to Italy Pass, so we're 
going here and I think we're going up this way and Italy passes right there. Okay, I'm gonna start making my way up towards Jumbo Lake and then Italy Pass. just striking how quiet it got all of a sudden. Jumbo Lake is aptly named because it's just basically surrounded by boulders. I very much doubt it's campable. So there's the trail ahead and Italy Pass to the very left right there. Tough climb, tough climb. Uh, I'm not done yet. I uh, just hit about 11,900 feet. And uh, so I think I got another 600 feet to climb before I'm completely over Italy Pass. Okay, you should be able to make out some cairns up there. So I'm still climbing up. That's not quite the top, I don't think. But uh, I am nearing the top. So there's kind of the knife's edge of whatever this is, I guess just Italy Pass. And then down there is the basin that I climbed up from. Pretty awful view. <laughs> that up there is the top of Italy Pass. Some bad clouds are coming in, so. Hey, I kind of hurry up this. Oh, wow. This is crazy. Okay, I am on top of Italy Pass. This is the last cross-country pass of the trip, so pretty much done with all the climbing. 
for the rest of the trip. It's all downhill back to the car. So this down here is called Granite Park. And um, it actually is closer to Honeymoon Lake than I thought it would be. So basically I'm gonna be going down that way and then I'm gonna be going down that to the kind of that outlet of Granite Park. And down in that direction is uh, Honeymoon Lake where I camped on night one. So I might just camp down there. That way it's a shorter walk to the car tomorrow. And right through there is the Royce Lakes, uh, where I went on day two. So, pretty good feeling to have looped around finally. And way out there, very distant view of Mount Humphreys. To get down to Honeymoon Lake, I need to drop over 2,000 feet in elevation. So it's gonna be quite the descent, but I'm sure I'm glad it's not climbing. Granite Park. Granite Park is just beautiful. There are some people camped out here. It seems like a really popular area. Well, isn't this a familiar sight? Camped at Honeymoon Lake again. So tomorrow's hike back to the car is the exact same as day one, but in reverse. But because of that, I'm not going to film anything tomorrow. Uh, so that means I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. But I want to talk about this route and this trip a little bit. I did three cross-country passes on this one. The first one being right over here, the uh, Royce Lakes, I guess, pass. And then I did Feather Pass. And then I did uh, Italy Pass today. And um, it's hard to say which one is the hardest. I know the Royce Pass was the, by far the easiest. Feather Pass and Italy Pass were probably equal in terms of difficulty. In fact, I probably would rate Feather more difficult out of all three of them because one, there's really no trail at all. It's just completely cross country, whereas there is a trail with Italy Pass. And with Feather Pass, there was like actual class two, almost class two plus kind of minor scrambling. And then the, the approach to it was just super long and very uh, kind of not technical, but very just difficult hiking uh, up, up a number of different shoots. Uh, so uh, yeah, Feather Pass takes the cake. Um, it's not exactly what I would call like hard in terms of technical difficulty whatsoever. It just is a difficult pass. In terms of the vibe, 
Uh, it was actually really chill out here. It was not as crowded as I was expecting it to be. Longtime viewers of my channel will remember I did a hike in the Ansel Adams Wilderness so about a year before this, and it was super crowded. Whereas on this trip, I saw a few people here and there, and, and I talked to a few people, and they were all really, really cool people. But for the most part, this place is pretty much, I was just on my own, alone. Because of that, I get a real actual wilderness vibe out of this place. For example, Miriam Lake, in terms of how like remote and isolated it is and how beautiful it is, has to be up there, probably my top five, top three campsites ever. Just an astounding place. It's almost too difficult to like pick what was my favorite part of the trip. Uh, I, I liked kind of all of it, even though it was very challenging with all those passes. So I do want to come back to the Sierra, trying to make this like a yearly thing. We'll see if it happens. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super tired. Um, it's been a long trip and uh, I'm ready for food. So I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, like if you like and subscribe for more. See you next time.